James Curran has written or edited 21 books about the media. His latest book is Misunderstanding the Internet. His work, work falls mainly into two linked areas, media history and media political economy. Curran has argued that the development of online media has proven not to be a panacea which will lead to greater worldwide understanding and improve equality. It cannot be separated from the political and economic pressures that are at play in society as a whole. The facts he has documented extensively show that, contrary to popular belief, journalism has not necessarily become more democratic in the digital age. I agree. It was promised back in the mid-1990s that the internet would promote global understanding, it would enormously increase productivity and growth, it would um, be a democratic force that would lead to greater equality in the world. By and large, those promises, unfortunately, have not come true. The great hope was that the internet would enable every citizen to become his own producer and reach out to the world. But what's actually happened is that the major established TV and press organisations have got dominant websites that are the most important news websites around the world. So they've extended their hegemony. Um, bloggers matter, but they're not read very widely, as widely as the major news websites produced by large organisations. Authoritarian regimes have the means to censor the internet, and they've developed an effective apparatus that enormously limited, limits freedom of expression on the net. Clearly the internet's increased freedom of expression, but that can't be equated with being heard. And although people can blog, although they can tweet, um, although they can broadcast, it doesn't ensure they have an audience. And rather sadly, the most attended people on Twitter are celebrities, not ordinary citizens. Um, the most visited news websites are owned by major news organisations. So, the, the, the citizen journalist um, matters, but has not been the big force that was anticipated, save in a small number of countries. South Korea is an example, where a great citizen website, Oh My News, built a mass audience. But that was in the context of major social ferment, a generational protest against um, the authority of the old and a protest against crony capitalism. So in very exceptional circumstances, um, as in Catalonia uh, or South Korea, the internet can make a big impact on journalism. But these are the exceptions, not the rule. Well, advertising, of course, has shifted to the net, and that's created a cumulative crisis, both in newspaper journalism and also in television news. And so the number of journalists being employed is shrinking, and the journalists who are in employment are under pressure to produce more, which leads to a lowering of quality. So um, the effect of the migration of advertising from traditional news media to the web has been to, on balance, lower the quality of journalism. And the reason for that is that the advertising going to the web hasn't created a large number of independent, successful websites. A lot of the advertising has gone to parts of the web not connected to journalism. A lot of hope, a lot of expectation, and a lot of disappointment. The central argument of Evgeny Morozov is that the internet is not the great force for freedom that was anticipated because the net can be censored and is censored in authoritarian regimes. But against that needs to be set the fact that the internet has enormously increased the effectiveness of political activists. 
So the anti-globalisation movement, for example, has been greatly strengthened by net-based communication. So there's hope as well as disappointment. Change will come not from the microchip, but from society.